As we learned in the chapter about Roman and Han empires, there has been exchange of goods between Europe and Asia for thousands of years. Trade networks between the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean, then on to China, were called the Silk Road. Along this route, goods were transported. It was also a conduit for the exchange of ideas. Buddhism spread from India east to China and Southeast Asia along the Silk Road. The Kushan Kingdom, which was a thriving force from just before 100 BCE until just after 100 CE, benefited from and influenced the Silk Road. This kingdom was located north of India, in modern-day Afghanistan. Control of the Khyber Pass was an important means of profiting from the Silk Road. The wealth of trade from the Silk Road Exchange profited the Kushan Kingdom. The Kushan Kingdom promoted Buddhism. Buddhist monks received gifts from wealthy benefactors, which allowed them to build monasteries along the Silk Road. They also built other landmarks, such as the famous statues of Buddha in Bamiyan. These statues were later famously destroyed by the Taliban when they gained a foothold in Afghanistan. The Kushan Kingdom faded from power sometime in the 3rd century CE. A new ruler came to power named Chandragupta, who dominated in northern India. He established a short-lived kingdom of the Guptas. This was a time of the Golden Age of India. The Golden Age reached its zenith when Chandragupta II reigned, beginning in 380 CE. This Golden Age was characterized by a strong economy. Production was ruled over by guilds called Yati. Various religions were tolerated, and cultural achievements included some of the best poetry and drama in Sanskrit literature, and statuary, mathematics, science, and medicine flourished. The concept of zero was introduced during this period, which revolutionized math. During the Gupta Golden Age, Chinese monks who traveled back to India on pilgrimage found that the religion was changing. Many people modified it from the abstract concepts of Nirvana and instead revered Buddha as a god. Hindu class divisions had popular acceptance. These changes caused a split in Buddhism. Theravada Buddhism clung to Siddhartha Gautama's initial teachings of a philosophy or way of life. Mahayana Buddhism developed for the masses, who did not have the ability to spend time perfecting behavior according to the teachings of the Buddha. Followers of Mahayana believed that only the wealthy, with the luxury of extra time, could achieve nirvana through their own efforts. For the masses, the intervention of a holy person called a bodhi became important. This gave more people a greater hope of achieving salvation. Mahayana became more of a religion than a philosophy. By the 7th century, both Theravada and Mahayana were in decline in India due to a resurgence in popularity in Hinduism and eventually the introduction of Islam. As the Gupta Empire went into decline, Islam was brought to India by Arabs. The first introduction was in the 8th century. Indian pirates attacked Arab shipping in the Arabian Sea near the mouth of the Indus River. In retaliation, Muslims demanded an apology, which Indians refused to give. This brought an Arab attack and Arab rule into the Punjab. After 300 years, Ghazni became the dominant state in northwest India. Mahmud of Ghazni, who ruled from 987 to 1030, would lead his armies on incursions into northwest India during the hot, dry summer season. They attacked Hindu temples, which were lavishly decorated and endowed with gold and other riches, and looted them. They attacked Hindus in their effort to gain this wealth, though Muslims who posed a threat were also attacked. Ghazni attacks were never able to gain a foothold in the Kashmir. Aristocratic rulers called Rajputs tried to repulse the attacks by Ghazni, but their efforts were ineffective. Some historians speculate that class division in India made for weaker Hindu forces who were fighting against a Muslim force in which talent was rewarded with promotion. Even slaves could rise to power in the Muslim forces. In 1206, Qutub ud-Din Aibak established the Delhi Sultanate. Aibak had been a Mamluk slave to a ruler in Persia. He rose to power, and eventually his conquests in India enabled him to establish the Sultanate of his own. He began building the Qutub Minar, the largest minaret in India. It was later completed by his son, Iltimish. Iltimish was succeeded by a daughter, Ravia, who had a successful and adventuresome reign as sultan. In 1221, Genghis Khan entered the Indus Valley in pursuit of another Indian ruler, but the Sultan of Delhi stayed out of the conflict. 
There was another incursion into India by the Mongols in 1299 with 200,000 men, but the Sultan of Delhi was able to defeat them. In 1301, the Mongols returned, but they were unable to capture the Sultan's palace. The Mongols were also driven out again in 1306 to 1307. The Kilji dynasty followed the Mamluks as rulers of the Delhi Sultanate. Following that dynasty, the Tukluks came to power. The Tukluks ruled the Delhi Sultanate until they met their match in 1398, when Tamerlane, a Mongol ruler from Central Asia, invaded northern India and attacked Delhi. Tamerlane established Samarkand as his base of power, and from it he built an empire out of territory that had once been part of the Mongol Empire. He gained control of Central Asia from the Black Sea in the west to the Caspian and Aral Seas in the north. His rule extended to Kabul and Lahore in the east, and Delhi in the southeast. He conquered Mesopotamia and ruled over Baghdad. He died in the middle of a military campaign in 1405. The Mughals, Muslim descendants of Mongols from Turkmenistan, posed a threat to India from north of the Khyber Pass. They came to power under their leader, Babur, in 1521. We will learn more about the Mughals when we cover Muslim empires in detail later in the course. Note how many of the names of locations discussed in this history of India have been discussed in our news broadcasts in recent years. Afghanistan to the north of India was a threshold that invaders crossed to enter northwest India. Several Muslim regimes ruled in northwest India with varying degrees of tolerance or violence toward Hindus. Since India gained independence from Britain in the early 20th century, conflict between Hindus and Muslims has been a continuing problem so divisive that it caused the creation of separate Pakistan and Indian states. The seeds for the conflict we see today between religious groups in the Indus Valley region and in Central Asia were sowed during the time period we have just studied.